Good morning, Amy. How are you doing today? Good morning, Arrow. Really nice to be here. I'm doing great. Thanks. You know, it, it's books like this, Attack of the Black Rectangle, that 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 I, this is the reason why I created an iHeartRadio View from the Writing Instrument. It's because it's books like this where, where listeners and readers need to come together as one, where they hear your story. They understand the journey of putting words on a page that are going to affect other people. And and, and it's just it's just I, I am blessed to have you on the show. Oh, well, thanks so much. That's completely the most, uh, look, I feel like I'm done with my day. I, I feel like I can go to, go to bed now and rest. Okay, You're bye. Fantastic. See you later. Thank you well, for saying it. No, I'll, I'll, no, don't you dare. <laughs> let's, let's stay here. But yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about this book. I, know, like, I have to be honest with you. It, it came from a true story. Um, and and as, as, you know, as writers, you know, that's what we do, right? We, when we, when we are, are faced with something we're curious about or angry about or or just want to explore further, we put it, we put it down on paper and we, and we beat it around, you know, for a few, you know, 2000 words. And, um, and, and to think that this is where we are, where, where it brought me talking to you is pretty amazing. So many people put the words on a page, but then they become what I call a hider writer. They hide those books underneath Mm -hmm. their bed. They put it up in the attic and things like that. When did you cross that line, Amy, where you, where you can take a book like attack of the black rectangles and say, you know what? This really doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the reader. Oh, right. Um, well, you know, it's funny. I started writing uh, 28 years ago. I wrote my first novel, um, when I was 24 and I didn't get published till I was 40. Mm-hmm. Now that wasn't my choice. That was their choice. They kept saying I was too weird because I was a woman and women weren't allowed to be weird. Right. And so I was very confused by that because I had been weird since birth. And I was like, this is weird that you think I'm too weird. Um, so I just kept being myself and I kept saying, you know, the things I wanted to say, uh, influenced of course by uh, writers before me who'd done the same, you know? Um, and so, uh, I finally, you know, got published back in, I guess, 2009 was this time it came out, but I had the conversation in 2007. But, um, you know, I always was somebody who was trying to help people with words or help people with communication, right? Listening and talking. Mm-hmm. So both, both parts, we can't forget it. We forget it oftentimes in, in, in present day discourse. But communication is both listening and talking. And, and in between, hopefully you have enough critical thinking to be able to have a conversation yes. and that that's really what that's that's the magic right that's the magical um uh, combination that makes a conversation so um i've always wanted to have a conversation with the world because i i remember looking at stuff and going that is wrong and yes. i want to talk about that or more importantly what's happening to that person is sad and i want to help them yes. and that's really where i come from and you know so i i honestly i think that was given to me by my folks giving me uh, critical thinking skills yep Yep. I, I love the fact that you called it conversation because my wife is a school teacher and, and that's one of the things that we openly yeah. discussed is the fact that in, in, in reading your words, it, they're not just words. It's like you're right here in the room with me. You're like you're, you're sharing a story with me. Yeah, that's the point. And, and the point is that in that story to do a bunch of things right for, for a reader, um, make them feel seen, help them feel seen. That's what I should say. Help them feel seen. Help them feel validated. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and for me, I mean, look, I'm not saying that I love writing books. I'll always be writing books. I'll be writing things forever. But what I learned as I, as I continued to write, especially for younger people, especially teenagers, right, um, and, and, and young teenagers as well, that books are really just a vehicle for my work. My work is being an advocate for young people, yes. especially teenagers, because yes. in this culture we are – actively encouraged to bully them um ask anybody like just say oh yeah i have a teenager and they'll roll their eyes and they'll say you'll get through it like as if you're you know um in something that's it's always negative um and we also you know we take their agency away we take a lot of things away especially when we're, we're you know in a situation like mac is in inside this book you know you're, you're looking at taking away words taking away ideas um and taking away information and history very important stuff to be able to add to the, the stew that is, you know, that, that, you, that you get to stir with the critical thinking, right? That's why that was a big analogy for this for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I hope that made sense. I think it's important. It, it, it does, because, uh, because the, the thing is, is that when, when, when you write and you're an advocate for students and stuff like that, that tells me that when you look at them, 
you see the future adult in them. You see the adult in them in the present place of now, and you also see that seed, and that they're going to need your personal journey in order to to be able to speak up with their own right. Because there's so many young adults right now that don't want to speak up, and it's like, no, I want to hear your voice. Tell me what's going through well, your head. That's right, and they've been they've been quieted by this attitude. I mean, look, when they fell over when they were four, right? Somebody ran to them and said, "Oh my gosh, is your knee okay?" You fall over over your awkwardly big feet. I don't know about yours, but I had some. Um, when you're 14, you had 10 years. And they're like, oh, get off the floor. Come on, let's get in the car. You've got to go to the dentist. And, and there's, there's a sort of interesting, um, there's also an interesting modeling of what adulthood or become, becoming an adult is growing up. We model adults all uh, becoming an adult all along in this country. It's often we leave our teen and child selves behind. So we get to 20 and we go, oh, teenagers, you know. And, and we're able to kind of almost well, to join in bullying our, our teen selves. And see, here's the thing. We've all been teenagers. And we all yeah. did dumb stuff or weird stuff or thought weird stuff when we were young. We all develop, right? And this idea that, that we're, we can be perfect or we can be the right one. We're the right one. We're going to win. Um, is really, uh, it's, it's ripping. I think it's, it's, it's not just ripping our discourse apart ripping our political, you know, the aisle no longer exists. So it's ripped our, our aisle out of things and all that politically on a larger level. But on, a, on a, the level that where I live is that it's taking confidence and agency away from young people. And, yeah. and that, is, that, is, that is a way to make them um, angrier, sadder um, adults. And, and I, I, I want to lift them up and remind them all the time that what they say and feel, especially in ballot, is very important. One of the things that, that, that really stuck inside my heart is the fact that you believe that reading is a right. And right away I have to go, then why, why are people censoring books? If reading is a right, let me read and decide. Correct. Correct. You know, my mom had a cool thing. She still reads the paper every day. She's 83 now. She reads the paper. But when I was a kid, she was an educator. I was raised by a kid. And uh, she would come over, it doesn't matter when I was six or what I, whether I was 16, she'd say, hey, come here. And she'd say, read this. And she'd point to an article in the newspaper. And it could be anything. It could be, could be you know, crime. It could be anything, right? So she'd, I'd read it. And I'd say, I'd look at her and be like, yeah. She said, you done? I said, yeah. She'd say, what do you think about that? Mm. And then I would tell her. Mm -hmm. That woman never told me what to think. My parents never once told me how to think. They never once. They might have told me how to feel because adults tend to do that with kids, Okay. Um, and, and, you know, they blow off feelings and stop crying or whatever. We all do that, I think. And none of us are perfect and none of us have all the answers, right? But, um, but when she asked me, what do you think about that? That is, that is um, the core of critical thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I think about people who want to take, take content, take content that could go into my brain. Like, how did I become a writer? How did I become a thinker? How did I become somebody who can have a conversation <laughs> with you, right? Um, it's because I had to read things that I loved. I also read things that I hated. I read things that disgusted me. I, I, and not just read, I saw them. Sometimes I saw them by accident because they showed up on the TV or they, sh you know, I, 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 can't, I can't not see something that grosses me out every day. I, I have Instagram. I'm constantly seeing ads that are over-concerned with my neck wrinkles. I mean, come on, I'm 52. Neck wrinkles are normal. But <laughs> it's constant, you know, making everybody feel small, you know. And it's one thing to do it to me, someone who can critically think and someone who can blow it off most of the time. Um, <laughs> it's another thing to advertise to young people and make them feel small so that they buy stuff they don't need. You know, it's, it's such a giant conversation that we should be here for days, to be honest with you, I was doing some research <laughs> recently. We're, we're talking about the word thinking, and I was doing research recently, and, and that the, the way it was explained to me was is that the human mind has already brought forward what you're going to think about 10 seconds before it arrives. That's where I want to be. That's what I want people wow. to tap into so that they can really trust, you know, that, that stream thinking ability because the, the voices can't disappear. We're in an age where we need to have a voice and writing and books and things like that cannot be censored. They've got to be able to get out there. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, I, I understand because I try and I try and see again, you know, we, we have, when you think about communication and conversation, that kind of thing, I try and really consider, and I listen, I consider the other side, if there is an other side. I mean, I don't know if there's an other side to, hey, let's lift up young people and tell them that they're, you know, amazing. Um, but, uh, and I, I try and understand it. And I, I do understand the idea of protecting and all this stuff, but then I, I really don't understand that, 
I haven't met an adult who didn't meet something that disturbed them early on in their life. I don't, I, and I'm, that is a wide brush that I just you know, used, but, or that hurt them for that matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and to deny our young people that same experience that they themselves could have had. Like, again, I've, I've been a volunteer my, my whole life. So I, I, I've met a great, I've worked with a great many survivors of a great many things. And almost all of those things happened before the, before the person was 18 years old. And so if we're censoring books, we're also censoring people. If we're saying books are, are inappropriate, we're saying people are inappropriate, yep. especially in this particular push. Because, and, and then to look at the demographic of people that are being you know, um, called unacceptable is, well, it's pretty obvious. It's everybody except um, straight white people. Yeah. Just put it straight out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you? I've I've talked with a lot of comedians as well as musicians, and they're going through a stage right now where they fear different things that they can say, and and that's one of those things where it's like, wow, we we should not be living in fear with the expression. Do you think that that there could be that one moment? Because the way I would react if somebody were to censor me, I'd say, just make sure you spell my name right. Because if you're going to censor me, put it in the papers <laughs> and spell my name right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, 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 that's, that is fantastic. That's absolutely right. And, you know, look, I, I got letters. I'll, I'll straight up say it. I got wow. one yesterday. And I got one the day before. And I, I got a letter. And, and what's really beautiful about these letters recently, it's been, well, I haven't read your book, but I heard from somebody <laughs> in my community that it's dangerous for young people. And, it, you know, and that, 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 that goes for other books, too. You know, this is not, that's the first book I've written. And I, you know, I think to myself, first of all, What's that say? What that says is that somebody's doing what they're told. If they haven't read it and they haven't used their critical thinking skills to write me a letter that says, this is specifically what I didn't like about your book, um, then, and, and you're just saying, hey, I heard this is crappy, so I decided to take my time and, uh, and, and spend it writing this letter to you to, to make, I guess, to make you feel small or, or bad or, or chide you because you're terrible. Um, and yet they never read the book. I mean, that is... That is that is adults doing what they're told, and yeah. that is a red flag to me in a culture that that embraces freedom as much as we do. Um, you know, one of my favorite my favorite images when I was a young child, because of course uh, it's, it's pretty badass, is uh, you know, don't tread on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> and I still believe in that. I'm allowed to own that still, even though I may disagree with people who are are really you know into that right now. I really I'm into it too. You know, don't don't take it away from me. I'm also very American and very proud. Yep. Um, I've lived abroad, so I know why. I know why I'm proud to be an American because I've lived abroad and and worked abroad. Yep. So it's you know ideas ideas are important, man. All ideas. Yep. Even the ones that you don't agree with. In fact, <laughs> those are the ones that make you most uncomfortable. Uh, are what that's called is a hint on what to think about. If something's making you uncomfortable, why? Yep. Yep. You know, and you can, you know, and, and, and that is, that is the critical thinking, right? It's, that is the curiosity that young people have and adults are trying to shut down. And that, that, that doesn't wash with me, Arrow, doesn't wash with me. Wow. You know, teenagers are capable, incredibly smart, so yep. savvy, so funny, um, so uh, badass. Right. Um, and we are trying to take away their power. That's no good. Well, I'm on Team Amy. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, gosh. Arrow, say that again. All right, look, you know who to contact. I will come anytime. Yeah, I would love to have this conversation. And wider and wider and wider. Abs- anytime. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Awesome. You too. Take care. Have a good weekend.